Sorcerer Lux has been a solid comp, but it gained even more power with the recent patch. And in this video, I'll teach you how to master this comp by going over the build, what items to make, and which Ogwins, Legends, and Portals to take, how to play the early, mid, and late game, and then I'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. The build is almost completely static, as we always want 6 Sorcerers and 3 Demacia active. This fills up all the slots of our level 8 board. Here Lux is our main carry, and Ari or Velkas are our secondary carries, and either Jarvan, Tarek, or Swain are our main tanks. We can't really drop down to 4 Sorcerers unless we hit an early Ari and can turn her into the main carry. In that case, you play 3 Ionia by dropping Malzahar and Velkas and add in Shen and Karma. There are not really any other variations that work unless we get some specific augments, and we'll get into that later in the video. Lux is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for her first. She has one core item, and that is a mana generating item, which is either Sojin or Blue Buff. Both are equally strong. This is to make sure she can cast more often and deal more damage. Her mana pool is low, and her attack speed is low, resulting in not enough damage without a mana generating item. The second item for Lux wants to be a damage item. This is either JG, Giant Slayer, Guardbreaker, or Deathcap. All of these damage items are great on her, so just make whichever you can out of these. The third item for Lux wants to be either the Radiant item you get from the Demacia trait, if not, the third item wants to be Hodge or Gunblade. There is a lot of backline axes in this set, so having some healing on your carry is always great. But if you get some healing augments, then the third healing item can be replaced by a damage item instead. After you made Lux items, you want to make either Static Shiv or Ionic Spark. This is the Shred Resistances of the enemy team. If you make Ionic Spark, it wants to go on Swain, Tarek, or Jarvan, and if you make Static Shiv, put it on Sona or Ari. After having made Lux and a Shred item, you want to make Tank items. These go on either Swain, Tarek, or Jarvan, depending on who you hit first. Although Tarek is better with them overall. He wants standard tank items like Warmogs, Stoneplate, Bramble, and Declaw. After all that, you should try to make AP items for Velkos or Ari. They both want the same setup, with one mana generating item and two damage items. And if you get a spatula, you want to make Sorcerer's Bat. This is incredibly powerful, as we get to drop Malsahar, and we can fit everything into a level 7 board. Always place the emblem on Sona, as she is the best holder of the item. This power spike is huge, so I would almost always make it the top priority if you get a spatula dropped. With this comp, we ideally want to get to level 8 so we can fit in our entire board. That's not something we can do every game, so running Aesol as our legend is huge to help us get there faster. If not, then running Vladimir as your legend also works, as the transfusion augment is great if you have been taking a lot of damage while saving for level 8. Vagar is also a decent option, but it's a bit awkward to run as you won't always get great openers for AP comps. The best portals for this comp are the Dreaming Pool, Yumi Zoom Zone, the Sump, Vandal Cafeteria, Maris Omegnum, Targon Prime, Placidium Library, and God Willow's Grove. And the best non-legend augments for this comp are Sorcerer Heart or Crest, Overcharged Mana Front, Magic Wand, Infusion, Medium and Shopping, Jeweled Lotus, Unified Resistance, Know Your Enemy, All That Shimmers, Contagion, Tons of Stats, Pandora's Items, and Long Distance Pals. I mentioned a lot of augments there, and the best ones out of those are Sorcerer Heart or Crest, Overcharged Mana Front, Magic Wand, Infusion, Medium and Shopping, and Jewel Lotus. If all that info was a lot to take in, then check out the cheat sheet for this comp. It's available for patrons and YouTube members. Here is the quirky cheat sheet from a previous set, so you know what to expect for the Sorcerer Lux cheat sheet that is available right now. The best early game board for this comp is to have a mix of 3 Void and 2 Sorcerer, where you use Malzahar as your item carrier. Other bars that also work are Sharima with Cassiopeia carry, or Rogues with Viego carry. And once we have found our comp, we need to make items. You make any items for Lux, or tank items. Also note that Shred items like Spark and Shiv are fantastic in the early game for more power. From here, you can play the early game however you want in terms of streaking, and if you want to learn more about how to play it, then check out my guide, Rego in depth on that subject. After the Krugs round, you should have more direction towards a comp. The general requirements to play Sorcerer Lux is to have one component for a mana item and one component for a damage item. Additionally, we really want to have two Sorcerers active already on Stage 3-1, as we want to get Sorcerer-specific augments on Stage 3-2. If you are weak in the mid-game, you can roll at either level 6 or 7 to stabilize. If you decide to roll at level 6, this should be done on Stage 3-2, 
The ideal scenario is to hit 6 sorcerers, but a more realistic board is to stabilize off a mix of sorcerers and voids, where you will use Velkos or Malsahar as your mid-game carry. If you decide to roll at level 7, you will look to go level 7 on either stage 3-5 or 4-1, which you pick depends on how much HP and gold you have. You will look to stabilize off either 6 sorcerers or 4 sorcerers and 3 Demacia. Both of these work fine, so don't force one over the other, but you will always need either Velkos 2-star or Lux 1-star to be stable. Once you get to stage 4-1, the late game begins. Here you will need to assess the situation to check if you can go for a fast 8 or if you have to roll level 7. This board gets a large power spike at level 8, since we are able to fit in everything that we need. There is nothing great to draw for our level 7 board, therefore we always want to push level 8 whenever possible. But most of the time, you won't have the HP or money to wait, and you will be forced to roll early. When rolling at level 7, it's very similar to rolling on stage 3-5. You want to end up with either 6 sorcerers, or 4 sorcerers and 3 Demacia. Make sure to hold on to the rest of the units you need for the comp, as the 1 cost sorcerers can be hard to hit at level 8. Also make sure not to roll too much at level 7, unless you absolutely have to, as the power spike at level 7 is large, but it's not large enough to win out like with other comps. And once you hit level 8, your final board will look like this. Like I mentioned earlier, there's nothing we can change about this without specific augments. So if we get plus 1 sorcerer, you will drop Malzar for Shen, and then at level 9 you will either add in Karma for 3 Ionia if you have a strong Arya that can carry, or you will play 8 Sorcerers if you don't have great Arya items. If you get plus 1 Demacia, you can drop Sona for Shen, but this is only good if you don't have a strong Velkos, as you lose Multicaster this way. If you get plus 1 Bastion or Targon, you will just play the same board, and nothing will change about it. General positioning with this comp looks like this. Here we have Ari next to Sona, so that she will get the attack speed from her. Lux is on the other side, so that our entire damage output doesn't stop if one side gets CC'd. We also have Malsar and Sona in the corners to tank farthest away damage from units like Akshan. Tarek is between our tanks to get the most value possible from his spell. Jarvan wants to be on the right or left side of the front line, depending on where the enemy carry is. Now moving on to some in-depth examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Akshan. We have Malzahar, Sona, and Belkas be the farthest away bait for him, and we also have Jarvan on the same side as the Akshan. Against the second guy, the big threat is Darius and Katarina. We have Lux target Darius first to take him out as fast as possible. We also have both our carries on the other side of Scion, so they don't get CC'd by him. Alternatively, if Katarina was the biggest threat, then we would simply make Lux target her first instead, by lining her up on the other side where Katarina is. Against the third guy, the big threat is Aphelios. We have Lux on the right side to be closer to Aphelios with her laser, but also so that the enemy Taric doesn't reduce her damage output, as she will be focusing down the Scion first. Our Jarvan is once again on the same side as the enemy carry. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they're available for you to members and patrons, and the links to join those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.